Hey guys, I have a pickup video because everybody loves pickup videos so much. And uh, so I'm going to start with something that I forgot completely about back in, uh, not in January, but yeah, in January. So one of them is uh, this Masters of the Universe Classics Lizard Man figure. This is the first figure for the uh, Club Eternia subscription of the year and um, this guy was in a few episodes of the filmation cartoon um, and this is the first time he's ever been rendered in plastic form and he's pretty cool uh, his webbed hand here has actually um, a thinner plastic material so it's, uh, it's translucent when it, you hold it up to the light which is pretty cool. It's a nice little touch. And um, he was in the very first episode of uh, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe and that was called the Diamond Ray of Disappearance. And if you look carefully here, he includes the Diamond Ray of Disappearance as an accessory and the way that it is, it is designed is so that Skeletor can hold it in his um, uh, his hand, his, uh, his, uh, clutching hand. He has a hand like that. And then, like, a, like a fist that you can put his sword into. And speaking of his sword, there's Skeletor's Filmation Crossbones sword that he only used once. I actually didn't use it. You saw it. It was in an episode called Dragon's Gift. And, uh, yeah. So this guy, I forgot to show you guys. And then today, I got my Club Eternia subscription stuff for uh, a, what is it, April? No, March. And uh, the first one is Huntara. This was a fan's choice winner figure. Um, she is based heavily on Grace Jones, and she was originally going to be a black character but someone decided to give her, give her purple skin, which looks pretty cool. And she looks exactly like she did on the cartoon. She was in one episode of um, She-Ra, Princess of Power. And this axe here does not actually go with her. It goes with another figure that I'll show you in just a moment. And she has these two lightsaber weapons that she used on the cartoon. Um, yeah, so there she is as she appeared in the uh, cartoon. And this is the club exclusive figure. And it is a first appearance He-Man. They gave him a new name, Ular. And he comes with a cool, interchangeable, vintage style He-Man head because the head didn't actually match the, the original uh, head that was on the old uh, 80s figures. The one that they've been using for this line has been drastically different um, as far as the design goes. Here's a picture of uh, the very first appearance of He-Man from the uh, comic book uh, He-Man and the Power Sword. It wasn't really a comic book, it was a little storybook that came with the figures. And uh, basically he's like Kazar and he's got the spear accessory and this here sword that looks like it would go with uh, a comic accurate triclops and uh, he's got bare feet and the Alfredo Alcala style head and uh, the little axe that Huntara came with is for him and this is coming out of the package probably after I do this video because I want to get to this DC comic in here. This is the first uh, volume of uh, several that will be released throughout the year. And uh, it is uh, very interesting. It has artwork by Axel Jimenez. He is in, uh, he's in um, Argentinian... Uh, comic book artist. He did uh, a number of uh, stuff for D DC Comics. Um, the Injustice Gods Among Us preview, or not preview, but prequel comic book to the game. 
he did the artwork for that, uh, among several other things. He did a couple of issues of uh, the Masters of the Universe ongoing comic for DC that you can get at the stores. And uh, yeah, so that is that for the figures. And I actually did a little tiny bit of retro stuff. Um, I was hitting up the pawn shop that I normally go to uh, where I buy my games at because I don't um, I don't do yard sales. I don't do Craigslist stuff just because of, uh, there's a lot of uh, logistics involved that prevent me from doing that. And uh, I'll get into that at another time. I'm not sure how much information I want to divulge, but uh, suffice to say it is a little bit sort of personal. But um, so uh, without further ado, I uh, picked up Brute Force again. I know absolutely nothing about um, other than it exists, and I remember this being probably on the cover of a magazine and thinking it looked kind of lame but it's I don't know I'll give it a, I'll give it a chance if I ever get a, uh, a working Xbox again um, I have an Xbox right over there that I can't use because it won't load games anymore it's an older one um, it was one of them that came out uh, the, well one that I bought pretty much when the price dropped and it was right before the uh, the Halo edition version came out which I would have bought in a heartbeat if I uh, had waited to buy it but I was pretty anxious to get it and I also picked up um, Kakuto Chojin Back Alley Brutal and uh, this I, I kept the sticker on just to show you guys that uh, this was a Microsoft store purchase and since I'm in Washington I imagine there's probably plenty of these around because uh, you know it's in Seattle and I'm a few hours away from Seattle it's actually a pretty good distance between uh, where I live and uh, Seattle but um, I just got back from there earlier this week and that was a pretty fun trip and I'll tell you guys about that uh, maybe another time this game is a fighting game. It was developed by, I think, guys that worked on Tekken. And um, it looks pretty cool. It was sort of, kind of, some sort of stink was raised over um, some music that we used in it. And I think one of the main protagonists here is um, a Muslim character. And I, I think that might have been one of the issues is because uh, it was a Muslim that wasn't depicted as a terrorist and uh, there was some music that was uh, used that they wanted uh, somebody wanted it removed I guess and so the idea was that they were that Microsoft was going to recall it remove the music and then reissue it without it but they, it didn't sell well enough for them to really justify that. So uh, I, I found those at the pawn shop. I was actually looking to get something else and they didn't have it anymore. And what I was going to get was um, the Xbox version of uh, um, X-Men Ultimate Alliance. No, X-Men, whatever the fuck that game is called. X-Men Legends. X-Men Legends 2 for the... Uh, for the uh, Xbox because I, I don't have that game and I have the first one and here's a cool um, gift card that my wife got for me when we were at the mall and um, it's a little lenticular Mario bursting through a wall if you can't see that it's pretty cool and what I want to do is get one of those um, stick on magnets and then just put it on the fridge because I think it was kind of cute um, and what I got with that was this uh, PS3 Tomb Raider game. It's been a, the only Tomb Raider game I've ever played is like a demo of one of the ones that was on Dreamcast. And I never really cared for it, but this one actually looks pretty cool. And I did play a little bit of it. I've only gotten up to like maybe the first um, major save point where you have to um, 
you have to fend off a few wolves and I uh, ended up dying and I changed games quickly to uh, something else that I wanted to play because I have a lot of games and I have a lot uh, to catch up on. Um, I also picked up uh, Darkness 2. This is going toward a goal that I had set a while back um, to have uh, pretty much um, most or if not all of the comic book based video games that um, have come out since the PS1 era. Um, there, I might skip a one here and there but I'm pretty good on my way uh, to uh, achieving some of that uh, goal there just because I actually do play a lot of those types of games anyway uh, whether they're movie based or, or um, comic based or or not it doesn't really matter uh, all I really care about is if the game is uh, fun um, or a, good, a decent time killer and uh, here's a game that I also picked up that was part of that goal and I also wanted to play it because it looks like a cool game and it actually is what I have played of it is much better than the reviews uh, give it credit for and that is Captain America Super Soldier um, I gave this one uh, about an hour's worth of gameplay and it's a lot of fun uh, it does have some crappy frame rate issues and the graphics aren't su super awesome the character models are a little bit uh, you know the characters you know they have kind of like rubber lips and kind of waxy faces but it's not a big deal the frame rate issue is kind of shitty but it's not a bad game at all um, the only thing that kind of stinks about it is um, the frame rate, like I said, it can kind of make it look a little uh, kind of crappy. And um, this does sort of borrow a little bit from the Arkham style of uh, uh, deflecting. Uh, the way that you can, uh, you'll see enemies glow and you can quickly respond to that with uh, a, uh, a parry attack and then um, you can chain those into different types of uh, uh, melee attacks, shield throws, all kinds of stuff. It's a pretty cool game. Uh, I would pick it up if you're moderately interested in it. It's not terribly expensive. And after that we got Lollipop Chainsaw. Um, this is uh, I got this mainly because James Gunn wrote it, and that's about it. Um, it's it's amusing. It's funny. Um, it seems kind of pervy, and um, I think they they are well aware of the the perviness of it, and it's very tongue in cheek, kind of like not not like a, a wank fest like um, Dead or Alive, where those went from being teen to rated M when they hit the Xbox where they just basically admitted it was fucking like wank porn and uh, I also got a different uh, what was it? a different uh, gift card from my uh, sister-in-law and her husband my brother-in-law and uh, my nephew and my niece Sign the card as well, and with that, I picked up uh, Green Lantern. Um, what is this one called? Rise of the Manhunters. I knew that. Uh, this also got kind of shitty reviews, but I don't care. Um, this is actually a fun game to play. It's a little bit like uh, God of War with flight, and uh, it's pretty cool. It's two player co op, and um, again, kind of not so hot on the graphics, but it doesn't really matter. It's, it's fun to play and that's that's all that really matters. That's really all that matters. And it, recently, the other day, same time I picked up that, I got um, The Incredible Hulk for, uh, this was a little bit higher than I would normally pay for a, um, a used game, but I just decided to grab it anyway. Uh, this is a lot of fun. It's pretty much open world uh, Hulk destruction. Again, waxy character models, 
Um, it's it's an older game. This came out around the same time as the, uh, the film. So uh, you get to see some poorly rendered uh, Tim Roth and Edward Norton character models that look like they came out of a PlayStation 2 game or something. But uh, the game overall is really fun to play, uh, especially for like a uh, quick fix. And um, yeah, it's, it's cool. And the last one, uh, not but last least, is uh, a little, I didn't actually get the game, it's just a, a box upgrade for uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, and, and this is the special edition artwork, and it comes with a big fat comic book slash um, instruction manual, and uh, I put the insert from my old co uh, game copy inside here, so that when you open it up, you got the color artwork on the inside. So that's kind of cool the way I did that. I like that. The, otherwise, the cover is exactly the same, with the exception of the front and the special edition on the bottom. Um, uh, and that, as they say, is that. And um, I hope you all have a good week, a good night, a good evening, good day, whatever. And um, uh, take care of yourselves. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll uh, talk to you guys next time. Again, take care of yourselves. See you soon.